We are in progress with Jeanette Delaney, filmmaker, writer, director um, of the film we'll be talking about for short film today. Very well produced, executed, um, really um, potent in terms of thematic content. A lot of layers to this film called Whore. Um, Jeanette, thanks for being on the show. Would you like to introduce yourself for the film prior to starting? Yeah. Hi. I'm Jeanette Delaunay. I'm a writer director uh, from New York City. And my film is called Whore, it's spelled H O A R. <laughs> and it's about a phone sex operator who's accepted into Oxford University. Uh, but before she goes, she has to confront her live in hoarder mother. Yes. Okay. So that's now I'm glad you mentioned that about the title because Whore, H O A R, is you know, connotes gray old age in this um, context. Maybe there's some um, kind of alliteration with respect to hoarder. I'm not sure, but um, she is a sex worker and she was called a prostitute by the her aunt who she lives in. She did get accepted into Osford and she's finding it uh, difficult to let her aunt know because she doesn't want to abandon her aunt who took her in after her mother dies so that's kind of the setup of the story a lot of thematic content going on there there's like abandonment there's generational conflict there's faith you know in terms of what's right what's wrong here her aunt is a very kind of devout catholic woman and her niece is a sex phone worker um who got into harvard or i'm sorry oxford uh and a lot of stuff going on. And I think in terms of the questioning, you know, at the very end of the movie, what most resonated with me as the outstanding theme is dreams, our dreams, right? She talks to her aunt about what was her dream and her aunt had to abandon her dream um, to be a nun in order to take care of her niece. And now the tables are reversed and there is something that the uh, main character has to abandon, leave behind her aunt who is in need if she continues with her dream. And so it's this, this kind of theme of what are we giving up to pursue our dreams? And um, that's a really cool thing to look at. You know, it's a really cool thing to look at, a really mature thing to look at. And the first question to play it forward is like, what was it inside of you, inside of your life experience that made you want to explore that theme? Yeah, I want to explore this thing because of relationships within my family and also friends. Uh, that were potentially codependent. Um, and I think, you know, with, with, you know, my generation and also being that I'm very Americanized, we tend towards independence of like, you know, leave everything behind, move forward. Um, and I think that's right. But there's also, you know, potentially a responsibility to take care of those who can't take care of themselves like what happens when you are releasing yourself from this codependent relationship but the person actually will not be okay if you leave so there's um, a certain responsibility that I think older generations really um, prioritized over pursuing your dream so I wanted that you know complexity to be there because it's never that simple as, as either side likes to make it seem well, you know, I, I, so, you know, what I hear you saying is that you've, you've experienced that as a, some sort of struggle and you've witnessed that struggle that's cross-generational and you're saying, Hey, there's a value of what our ancestors, our parents, forebears are teaching us with respect to, Hey, if you're, if somebody's dependent on you, where do you, how do you place the value? How do you prioritize these things? How do you navigate that? And I guess I kind of want to put it back in your court and just say, okay, but there's something in you that had to have had a really personal connection with that, you know? Yeah. Um, and what was that, if you don't mind sharing? Yeah. So um, 
this story is completely made up, but <laughs> the heart of it is is very much me. I think just going through COVID and having um a a family member who was elderly and wasn't taking care of themselves and my life started to revolve around that but at the same time I had dreams you know I was writing scripts I wanted you know I I am a filmmaker and during COVID it felt almost frivolous to want anything outside of just wanting your um, friends and family to be okay so I really struggled with what to do it never seemed as simple as it had before mm -hmm. yeah well i'm glad you added that to um the meat on the bone so to speak because it helps understand like even a deeper theme that's underneath this you know interplay between dreams and what are we giving up it's really like um how do we honor both things that seem to be in conflict how do we honor our parents or those that may need us and how do we honor ourselves and how do we navigate that landscape in a way that's honorable right and that yeah. and that kind of takes us to the second um layer and i don't know if the film resolves that i mean the film doesn't really tell us what we do um it just kind of sets up the conflict what do you think in your life and based on you know your experience with writing this theme out and and really reviewing it from all these different angles from you know one character to the other character how do you think we can honor those two things that seem to be in conflict yeah i think going to either extreme it, just i in my opinion the way that humans work never is never satisfying like if you just strive for success and you leave everyone behind I don't think that makes people happy <laughs> at the same time if all you do is is sort of martyr yourself and you never go after anything you want I don't think that makes people happy either and so I think it's always an intricate balance and there's almost never a perfect answer that's all-encompassing I think that's really what I'm getting at. And that's why I don't give the um, the audience like a pill, you know, or or the right answer. I just try to um, humanize that that experience. Mm -hmm. um, cool. I I think, you know, you've done it well, I guess, in terms of humanizing the experience. Um, how did you or are you navigating it in your life in that balanced way? It's always tricky. I like to take my ego out of it, first of all, because I think the ego makes you go either direction, <laughs> um, but it's not what's best for you. I think I've become a little bit less apologetic about, you know, going after what I want, um, but at the same time, honoring relationships that are important to me. And so really figuring out what relationships are the, are the ones that it would make me happy to give or give a little bit more sometimes than I'm, than I'm taking. It can't be every relationship. Um, so just prioritizing, I think your time, but also figuring out which relationships are worth prioritizing and finding ways to prioritize yourself, even if it's in smaller ways, is, um, I think putting yourself last, you know, that very kind of Catholic martyr thing that the, the aunt slash mother portrays, um, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it's made her happy, <laughs> you know, yeah. over the course of her life. Um, so just always, I guess, um, having those conversations with yourself and knowing that it's important to also prioritize yourself. Um, I think every situation is different, you know, especially when you, when it comes to like your, how do you balance your dreams if you have children? <laughs> like, that's really hard. And I don't have children, but I can only imagine um, you know, or when your parents are elderly or when your best friend is in dire need of something all of a sudden, like, what do you do? Um, yeah, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to navigate. Well, I think you've summed it up very well. And I think the key money move that you said was, hey, 
take your ego out of it. And that starts there because that gives you an objective lens. And then you're talking about, okay, well, let me self-reflect, you know, because that's what you're doing when you're prioritizing, right? You're going up and down the list. You're saying, hey, well, what's right? What's where? What am I feeling good about? What's the thing to do that is living inside of me that's going to be something I can live with, right, down the road? And so, okay, take the ego out of it, prioritizing, and then having that time and space to reflect on what is that nuanced thing to do, which is right for you, right for the other person and going to make you feel like, okay, you can take this step and not look back on it and regret it and not, you know, do something that you're going to carry with you. So, Absolutely. yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's a very, very mature position to take. Um, and, you know, not everybody gets there in their life. So, um, you know, that's one of the things, you know, I'm looking at you and I'm say, seeing a young filmmaker, you know, relatively young filmmaker. And I'm like, wow, you know, that's a, that's a profound place to be in. And how cool that not only you're there, but how cool is it that making films and telling stories has helped get you there? You know, and sharing that. Do you feel it's true? <laughs> yeah, I definitely do. I think like because I started off as an actor and, you know, telling other people's stories. And then when I realized like, oh, I can tell mine, but also I can tell a story that maybe isn't told that often and then reach people who are kind of going through the same thing. And I have the power to do that in a small way um, with a short film that was very empowering. And just like, you know, going to festivals, I, I had so many people reach out to me in person, but also online and say like, I've never seen something like that before. Like my, oh my gosh, my, my grandmother, you know, was a hoarder and the way it affected our family. And I've never seen that like portrayed that way. It meant a lot to me because I think most of the time, if, if you're as, you know, as a storyteller, it, your, your stories are almost never specific enough. Like there's a voice in your head that goes, who wants to see this? Like, it's only me. There's ways that like, life and society make us feel isolated like we're the only ones so I even though I have, hadn't personally met anyone that was exactly going through what I was going through I had to have faith that there's people out there that will relate to some aspect of the story I'm telling for sure I mean Gina and you know one of the saving graces that I've had in terms of just kind of the way I live my life is that I have always trusted the fact, hey, if I'm thinking something and I think, oh, it's weird or strange or what a million other people have, it's, you know, not unique to my human experience. It's part of humanity and that is rooted in humanity. It's okay to acknowledge that, reflect on that, like, you know, accept it, work with it, whatever you got to do with it. Um, so, yeah, I get that. And that's great that you are feeling more empowered by, you know, the personal stories and sharing those personal stories with the world. Um, you know, it takes me to the next question. Last question. Um, Jeanette, how have you been personally changed after making horror? Yeah, making horror is a very validating experience as a filmmaker and as a person. As a filmmaker, I made it with a fellowship and we had tight deadlines. I had never worked that quickly in my life. And I just gathered, you know, um a skeleton crew and just did it. And I wasn't sure if I could work that quickly. And I did it. And I'm so happy with um, the conviction that I ended up having. So I discovered that about myself that like, I, I work well under pressure. Um, and then, yeah, as a, as a person, just as I was saying, just having so many people reach out to me saying how much they related to the story and that they felt seen meant a lot to me because that's why I got into filmmaking. It's just to to make it a vehicle for empathy, but also like, you know, self-reflection. Um, and just knowing that I reached people just is makes my journey as a filmmaker rewarding, you know, um, and watching the film for myself and knowing that I was brave enough to tell a story that I wasn't sure anyone was gonna <laughs> relate to because it's very specific. Um, and so just continue to go that direction. Um, I think that's the 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 lesson I learned. Just can just forge on. 
or John. That's excellent. Um, you know, uh, I want to mention that the the cast is great. They are terrific. The cinematography is great. Your direction was great. Um, and a follow up question: If you, um, you know, are inspired to answer it, it is this. Um, you know, the dream of being a filmmaker right where are you at with it in terms of hey what are you giving up what if you make it what if you don't what what's it, what is making it you know what i mean how, how are you feeling about that general milieu of topic yeah i tend to be i've tended to be a bit of a perfectionist where i have really high standards for myself i want it all of course um but my journey has a as a filmmaker has made me appreciate the actual journey because there's always been, there's been so many unexpected moments that have felt like success to me um, mm. in very unexpected ways. Mm. Even my, my second short um, that I made with like, you know, sort of, you know, artistic friends, but friends <laughs> in an apartment in the Heights for like no money which I didn't, I didn't think anything would come of it, I ended up winning a award for HBO and then is now on Max. When wow. you speak HBO Max. So like things like that just make me um, realize that I don't know what's going to happen. That big thing that I'm striving for might not bring me the satisfaction that I want. And it could be that little film I make with some friends in an apartment is the thing that like reaches all these people and that I'm most proud of. So I think just appreciating the journey is something that I've grown to be able to do. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome that you've grown to be able to do. That is a, a key, um, you know, that is a key kind of underscore uh, there. And, um, you know, I'm definitely happy for you uh, because I think it's going to save you a lot of heartache, um, you know, down the road, uh, because I don't think that mythical thing I've made it exists, but those moments do. And those moments can change when your expectations are um, different, you know, when your expectations aren't on that the whatever it is, you know, thing. And then you're like, oh, okay, well, I don't know, I maybe just, it was this one, you know, shot or this one scene or I caught this or I did that or somebody said that, you know, that one thing that makes you um, feel um, in line with your goals, you know, what you've set out to do. Jeanette Delaney, thank you. Filmmaker, writer, director. The film is for, uh, we're going to throw it out there. It's in the links, do the shouts, whatever. Um, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much. Been a pleasure. Bye, everybody. All right. Peace out. Till next time, I'll play it forward.